Hot as hell, and my dirty pot is in the background. Hopefully no one sees this, because Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Oh, good morning. It's the evening. Mm, 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 mm. Hello. <laughs> mm. So today I have rice with carrots and um, what is this called? Peas. <laughs> and there's probably stuff in my teeth. Oh. Very sad excuse for dinner. Ugh. And my dirty pots and pans are in the background, you guys. Um, yes, Mike and I are still together. Hmm. I didn't even know why I'm doing this live stream. As always, I just get on here and <laughs> talk about random stuff. Hmm. And not cornflakes. Mm. My day's okay. Um, unfortunately, I tried to film, that's why I'm live. I tried to film a video for the past literally three to four hours, and it was a catastrophe. Like everything that could possibly go wrong has gone wrong. Um, my battery died. The dogs next door started barking for like 30 minutes. The postman came, rang the doorbell in between. Um, something fell randomly and broke while I was making the video. Like, I don't even know. So then I just decided I wasn't happy <laughs> with it. And I'm just going to go live because I'm not, I can't sit down and talk to my camera anymore, which I'm doing right now, but that's different. I'm actually talking to people and not myself. Hmm. <laughs> Don't swallow this spoon. <laughs> Hi, Carlita. Mm. Spooked. Spooked. Like a ghost. Don't say that. I don't want no ghosts in here. Mm -mm, I have a fear of ghosts and demons. Because sometimes randomly in the middle of the night, I hear something downstairs in the basement happening. Mm -mm. I honestly think there's a demon living downstairs. <sighs> I actually have no idea what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> oh, look at Sasha asking me about my top three designer handbags. Hmm. Um, on my wish list for Christmas... The, I'm actually going to type them out to the Alma because if there's other purse freaks out there, the Alma BB, the Gucci Marmont, I think it's small camera bag, and what other? The Neo Noe is also one that I like. Those are amazing. I don't think we have mice, spiders the size of mice, yes. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. So Mike has a humongous fear of spiders. Uh, I shouldn't be saying that because he's gonna get so upset that I say that. But he really does have a horrible fear of spiders. And if we have ones that are relatively big, meaning if they're bigger than this, he will get rid of them, he will vacuum them up. So there was one in the laundry room the other day and I saw it, and it was so big. It, it was the biggest spider I've ever seen in my life. And so he tried to vacuum it, and it was too big to fit in the vacuum hole. I have it on video, you guys. It ran away from the vacuum. And ugh, ugh, ugh. I, mm -mm. Yeah, I also wish that I could afford these bags, too. I can't, but a girl can dream. Hmm. Mm. As long as the spiders stay out of sight, they can live in the house. Yeah, I know. But as soon as they come out and start making the house their home, that's when I can't. Like one day we were opening the door to go out on the terrace garden and a literal big black spider jumped from the door and just started running across the floor. And it's just like, why? Hmm. 
Yes, it's just a random live chat. Mm -hmm. You had a spider crawl on your hand while driving. Never. The car would belong to the spider. The spider would be a new auto driver. Mm -hmm. Am I a gold digger? <laughs> if I was a gold digger, I think I'd be living a very luxurious life in Dubai or actually in the south of France, somewhere in Italy on a yacht. Mm. But here I am in Munich eating my peasant rice with my peasant carrots and my peasant peas. That's not a very good gold digger lifestyle. <laughs> mm. Am I looking forward to Oktoberfest? Yes, I am. I was trying to make a video today about Oktoberfest and it was just a disaster. So you guys will probably not get <laughs> an Oktoberfest video, which I'm not even upset about. Um, let's see. Let me see. Yeah, spiders do have more fear of me than I do of them, but that still does not <laughs> justify them making their my house their home. Ooh. Ugh. I'm really, I've gotten better though, because I used to kill even the little tiny spiders that are seriously the size of your pinky nail. I used to kill those as well. Now I let those crawl on me. I let them live. I'm not afraid of them. It's just the really humongous ones that are seriously like this big in the basement. Mm, let's see. What are some of the jobs I have done? All together in life or just in Germany? I've, in Germany, I've done like odd jobs, like things that weren't really contract wise, <laughs> but I did little odd jobs. But more importantly, I was an au pair, I was a nanny. I worked in a kindergarten, a German kindergarten. I worked in an English speaking kindergarten as an English teacher. Those were like my main sources of income job wise. Mm. Oh, Olivia, <laughs> Olivia, you're buying an Alma BB. Oh. <laughs> I really want an Alma BB. That's my top of the list bag that I really, 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 really want. And I'm honestly debating if I should get it because for a lot of people, it's a very expensive purse. One of the things that I spend the most money on are purses. For some people, they don't understand this, but it's for me how guys can spend thousands of dollars on a car or how men can spend however much money they spend on food or something. I can't do that. Or not that I can't do that. I don't want to do that. So purses for me are like beautiful, but they're so much cheaper in Europe than they are in the United States, like hundreds of dollars cheaper, hundreds of euros cheaper. Um, do you understand? Do you have problems understanding some German comments because it's very complicated German at times? Yes. And I've realized that I've actually had a hard time understanding German in general. Hmm. Sometimes people don't speak proper German. Do I own a dandel? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how regular are these long chats and how long are they usually? Um, they're very sporadic. I don't have a schedule. I just go live when I have very a lot of free time and I'm usually alone at home. And yeah, they're usually an hour-ish, give or take, sometimes more, sometimes less. If you had to choose one car to drive for the rest of your life, which car would you drive? Now, is money an issue or not? So if I had all the money in the world and I could afford one car and drive it, I think I would take the, um, is it the Lamborghini Urus? Urus? The anus? <laughs> That's <laughs> Um, it's like the Lamborghini SUV. That's if I had like a whole bunch of money. If I could just drive one normal car that I really, really think is nice, which a lot of people are going to be like, what? That's not even a cool car. It would be like a brand new Toyota Camry or a Volkswagen Jetta. I really, really like, but the American version, not the German version because they look different. Um, I like the American version of the VW Volkswagen Jetta. They look so nice. But yeah. 
Um, hi from New York. Oh, hey. Well, I hope you have fun at work, Hans. Sorry. <laughs> I, it's very interesting because I get a notification when I go live and it never did that before. So it's so cute. Cool. Cute. Uh, mm. Any plans for Oktoberfest? My mom, my mom is coming in three, four days and she's going to Oktoberfest with me. Um, what degree or studies do you have? Uh, should I type it or should I say it? Because this is an often asked question. I studied accounting and then accounting is not valid in Germany. So now I am studying, taking courses in business, very simple, basic business management, because one day I would like to get a master's in Germany. And in order to do that, you have to have a bachelor's degree that is accepted from a field that is also accepted in Germany. So, huh. Um, ew, my girlfriend recently decided to keep a spider in a jar as a pet. I think she really, really needs us to move to a pet-friendly building and get a dog. Amen. <laughs> Never. Mike and I could never. I was thinking to myself because we're really bad at this, actually. We live alone and we live together and both of us have a horrible fear of spiders. So <laughs> I remember we keep the vacuum cleaner usually in the basement and there was a spider that was right next to the staircase going down to the basement. And neither of us wanted to go down to get the vacuum cleaner so the spider literally just stayed there we don't know what happened to it and we think he's somewhere still in the house but whatever um wait let me see <laughs> along came polly yes listen to my playlist my music playlist is so it's hot. it's a hot mess mike always laughs at me he's like i can't deal with this because then i'd be like mm, rap music twerking music and then there's classic classical music mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. how many kids would I like to have <laughs> dependent on when I have my first kid maybe two but I'm not having kids anytime soon so uh, speaking of which I'll take my birth control Oh, should I have said that on the live stream? <laughs> uh -uh -uh. When is the next video with Mike coming? Um, it's always a hassle to get a video with Mike. And as you guys have noticed from the recent video that I posted with Mike, he is not, like his attention span when it comes to YouTube videos or making YouTube videos is literally zero. I don't understand. In life, Everyday life, he's so concentrated. He's like so focused on everything. But as soon as it comes to me having a YouTube video or making a YouTube video, he's not paying attention. He jumps, he's like a squirrel. He jumps from one branch to the other. Um, thank you for answering my questions. My girlfriend and I are moving to Germany, so I'm a bit nervous. I was nervous too. I cried and I was so sad when I first got to Germany, but it all worked out and I'm okay. I'm still alive and I'm still healthy. So I think that if I can do it, seriously, if I could do it, because if you guys knew me and if you watched my videos from many years ago, you understand that I was a hot mess and I don't know how I made it in another country by myself. Um, Oh, what kind of car did you get in Florida recently? Oh, this is a very nice question, which this car, <sighs> it's a hot mess because my mom and my brother, this is going to be a rant. I'm pissed off. My mom and brother have been driving it because my mom needs someone to take my brother, my younger brother, who is eight years old to school. And so that is my middle brother. He's 23 ish. And so I'm letting him drive the car. <sighs> and they have now broken the car completely. And it's at, the shop right now but it's the bmw x5 like an older version but it's such an awesome car if you know anything about cars this car has so much power oh my gosh it's such like i don't know the driving experience for it like i don't know in this car so much different than a car 
that's from today. Because I feel like cars today, you don't really drive them. You just sit and steer. And there's not that much interaction with the automobile. You don't feel it as much. So yeah, that's me on my also my little rant. Hmm. I think they're way more popular in the U.S. anyway. Hardly anyone here drives a Jetta. And this is very true. And also a Passat in Germany is what a Jetta is in the United States. I'm pretty sure. Like when I see a Passat in Germany, that's what a Jetta looks like in the United States or the older Jettas. The newer Jettas in the United States look like the Passats back in the day, the long cars. Do I have any allergies? Um, pollen, um, pollen and dust. That's why my nose is always itchy because I'm so sensitive. Like it gets really red. Um, and inside here, I have so much going on. Like I can feel in my nose and stuff. I have to get that checked out, but I don't want them sticking any needles up my nose. I don't want them doing any surgery on my nose. That's one thing for me that I have a big fear of is getting like surgery on my nose. I I'm not afraid of anything when it comes to surgery and medicine, but my nose, that's really scary for me. <laughs> it's a mukbang type of video. I'm hungry. <laughs> mm. Let me see. Oh no. Let me see. I missed, I scrolled down too far. Now I'm lost. Here in Poland, a Passat is for the older white trashy guys with mustache, wife beaters, and socks with sandals. Okay, so in the United States, a Passat is like an older, middle-aged woman mom car. Not a man or a drug dealer's car. One of those old Volkswagen or Jettas, like a 2005 Jetta. If you know what that looks like, that reminds me of like either a teenager's car that's got their first car or a drug dealer. <laughs> no, I don't have an army background. I don't see that question, but I don't have an army army background. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. What is your favorite German grocery store? Tangleman, because of the name. I think it's a really cool name. But there's only an Edeka where I live, so I have to go to Edeka. And it's actually a lot nicer inside, though, compared to Aldi, Gravy, or in other places. Mm. What's your opinion on German television broadcasts, like just German TV in general? Mm, it's okay. It's gotten better, I feel like. Actually, I feel like TV altogether has gone downhill because you have the internet. So the market for television has really decreased. I mean, people are still watching TV, but I feel like this is more important. And why do I, why do I say um, United States? Because when I say US, I wanna say us. And that's it. It's easier for me to differentiate between United States U.S. and U.S.A. Mm. Have you talked about German band modern? Plus, what is the modern band? It's like music. Mm. How did you get your first job in Germany? Um, this is actually a very interesting question. So when I first came to Germany, I'm pretty sure a bunch of y'all know the story, but if you don't and you're new here, hi. Um, I came to Germany to be an au pair. I did not work out, as most of you guys know. I was kicked out. I was homeless at Hauptbahnhof with all my suitcases, sitting with the rats and sleeping on the floor. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, but this is honestly a true story. And then I found a new family that I was going to work for, and I was an au pair for them, but then I became a nanny for them. And I worked with them for so long, you guys, and they were literally our part, like a piece of my heart, and they were so helpful for me. But they helped me get a working visa that allowed me to do other things in Germany, basically, have other jobs in Germany. So yeah, 
that's how I got my first job. I came here as an au pair, started as a nanny, did other things while on that visa, and that's how it all panned out. Um, let's see. How was your first couple of days in Germany? Um, when I first got to Germany, it was a very big culture shock. So I came to Germany in 2010, and I thought, because I stayed in Germany in 2010 for a few months, that I knew everything about Germany, but I didn't like it at the time. So then when I came in 2015, it was a whole different experience because I was excited. I liked the people at the time that I was with, and... I got to experience it. Also, I think one of the good things about being an au pair is that you get to experience Germany from a nicer standard of living because families that have au pairs usually, usually have money or more money than the average family and they're able to do a lot more things. So one of the nicest things that I enjoyed about the family that I worked for was that I got to go on trips. I got to go to events in Munich or places in Munich that I would not be able to afford or do if it were not for them. So I think for the first couple of days, um, it was fun. It was a culture shock. It was me getting used to it. I didn't like it at first, but then after, I think once I switched families, which was months down the line, I really started loving it. And that's also when I started <laughs> making my YouTube channel because then I started like my mind started changing. I started meeting a family that actually, I think, cared about me. Um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> how did I live? How long did I live at Hop on Home? You guys don't know. I've said I've said this story many, many times before. I'm being very dramatic, but it was literally um, in 2015 when I first came to Germany. Um, let me think. I was with a family and it just did not work out, you guys, at all. It was, it, it could have been me, it could have been them. I think it was just both of us, myself and the family, not matching properly. And I think they expected a lot more from me or me to be a certain way, when in reality, I was very much following the rules. So for me, my rules, <laughs> were they their rules or not? But there was a fight, basically a very petty fight between all of us about who was supposed to take the kids somewhere. And it boiled down to me not caring um, or me not being available, but it wasn't my, I don't know, for me, it wasn't my responsibility, but they felt it was like my responsibility. And so after that little fight, it was early in the morning it happened. And then that same day, like at noon, they told me to get out by like, I think five o'clock at night. And I had nowhere to go. <laughs> at the time I had a boyfriend who was gone. He was on vacation and I didn't have literally no friends, you guys. I had one friend and she wasn't allowed to have people stay at her house. So I could have, I was going to stay with her just for like a few days, but it just, panned out that nobody was available for me. My mom wasn't answering her phone. My grandma wasn't answering her phone. Nobody was answering their phone so I could like get a hotel or something. I'm like, I'm poor. I've been an au pair making 250, 260 euros a month. I can't afford anything. I literally had no money. I couldn't go stay at a hospital the hostel because they were all booked out. So I just put a message in a Facebook group and I all, I have to see, let me see if I can still find the message actually, because it's probably still there. Um, <laughs> and I was like, basically I'm at Hauptbahnhof. I don't have um, any internet. I don't have any money. Can someone please help me? And um, let me stay with them. I'm like, I'm grateful for anybody. I don't know. I'll pay you somehow. I'll cook for you or something. That was basically what I said. And some girl, she came and she helped me move um, and she helped me with this whole process. But then at the time, my boyfriend at the time, he let me come and live with him for like, I think it was a few months actually. And I was going to go back home to Florida. But then after the family contacted me and they're like, we really want you to work with us. I was like, eh, I'll give it another try. Why not? I have nothing else to lose. I'm already poor. So, hmm. so yeah, let's see. 
if I'm in here. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find the post. There we are. I know it's taking a while, so you guys, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I can't find it. So basically, that is what happened. You shouldn't be scared though, because you know, looking back at it, it's actually pretty, it's actually not pretty funny. Looking back at it, it's pretty funny because I'm okay now and I'm actually really okay. And I'm glad that that happened because it put me in a position to meet the family that I met. It put me in a position to, you know, meet Mike when I did. It put me in a position that all of these things slowly looking back at the bigger picture now, it got me out of a situation where I probably would have left Germany a lot sooner had it not been for them kicking me out and me finding someone, a new family to go to. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm actually on a box because if I put it down there, <laughs> that's a horrible angle. <laughs> mm. Um, trying to shut all the extra applications on my computer off. Mm. Can you kick me off? <laughs> yeah, you need to send it. Go. I'm always like one of those people that says go. What The worst that could happen is that you get attacked by a monkey in Bali. But... <laughs> In reality, what can really happen to you? Nothing. I mean, you could lose money. You can become poor. But in reality, if you're a strong, you know, motivated, driven person, that's most likely not going to happen. Mm. What is Mike doing for a living? If you do enough research... I'm not going to say it because he doesn't want me to ever say what he does. But if you do enough research, you'll find out what Mike does. Mm. No white whiteners included. Thank yeah. See, he knows. <laughs> mm. Do you speak German most of the time when out? So I've realized as of recent, I don't know if it's because I spent so much time in the United States, I get so nervous when I speak German, you guys, and I don't know why. Mm -mm. I don't know what it is. With people that I don't know, it's fine. When Mike's not around me, it's fine. But as soon as Mike is with me, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Mike does not work for BMW. I've said so many times, and he said it too. Um, he does not work for BMW, I promise you. Promise you, promise you, promise you. Have I ever been to the Netherlands? No. No. If you don't mind, I have a weird question. Why did you want to work or stay in Germany instead of America at, in the first place? So the United States, I feel like when people watch my videos, they think that I am against the United States, and that's not the case in any way, shape, or form. I really like the United States, you guys, actually. And me saying that I don't like it would be a lie. It's just that there are a lot of, you know, fundamental problems in the United States that as a society, I just, I can't deal with it sometimes. And I feel like German people, they have their problems as society as well and with the people as well. But the problems in Germany, 
don't bother me as much as the problems in the United States. The problems in Germany for me include like people being judgmental, people not being that open, people not being very creative in Germany. That's something for me that is something that bothers me, you know. And the United States stuff for me is like underlying racism and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But yeah, or just even health insurance and everything. It's just stuff that I, you have to pick your evil. Which do you like? You have to pick your poison. Would you rather be in a place that, you know, is the land of opportunity, which the United States, it's not the same that it used to be many, many years ago, but to say that it isn't the land of opportunity, I think is really pushing it because you can still do so much and be very successful with nothing in the United States. And Germany, I feel like that's not common at all unless you do something like a construction worker and you start your own business but even doing that you need to have a foundation of having money usually some way shape or form it's not just going to happen when you're broke but poor um like my mom i can use her as an example my mom didn't go to high school she didn't go to college she didn't like do any of that stuff and my mom right now for me she is so successful and she makes so much money for not doing any of like the normal things that you're supposed to do in order to be successful. And I know a bunch of people in the United States that are like that. So it's just little things like that. For me, I think in Germany, it's just very hard to be successful um, if you don't have education and money and people that know people. Um, oh, I haven't been on Flash Academy in so long actually. Hmm. Hmm. Is July a hard month to find housing? I don't know. When Mike and I were looking for houses, it was relatively late. I mean, we live somewhere and we've been living in the same place for years, but we wanted to look at apartments, apartments because this is a house, and we wanted to look at apartments that were closer to the city. And it was so hard and I think it's hard in Munich no matter where you look. And our budget was relatively high and what we were looking for wasn't like a normal apartment that people our age or I don't know, something would look for. So I can only imagine when people my age, cause I know most people my age, they can't afford, you know, 1,300 euros a month or they can't afford 1,500 euros a month or even like 900 euros a month. So for people that are looking for a 500 or 400 to $800 apartment limit, whether it be in a whole studio apartment or a room, um, it's very hard in Munich because there's so many people. Um, If you buy the bags and purses, can you not buy um, tax-free reimbursed when I fly to the States? So the first purse that I purchased, um, that was from Louis Vuitton. I technically wasn't allowed to get taxes because I still had like my visa and it was still valid until like whenever. So I basically lost like a hundred something dollars. But for me, it wasn't that big of a deal because I got the bag $400, $500 cheaper in Germany, I think, or three, something like that. Um, do you find that you behave differently when speaking German versus English? Um, yes, I feel like I'm a lot funnier in <laughs> English, you know, glowing blowing my own horn, tooting my own horn. I feel like I'm so much funnier in English and German. I'm more shy. I'm more, you know, reserved because I don't want to make a mistake. But yeah, the other day I was with Mike and his mom. Oh, it was so embarrassing. And I wanted to say something about like the eggs, like the eggs, the yellow of the eggs. But instead I was like, Dinette, ah, yeah. And it was with his mother, you guys. And it was so embarrassing <laughs> because I meant to say like the yellow of your egg, <laughs> the egg that you cook, not your ball sack or not your balls. And I was so embarrassed. Oh, so embarrassing. Yeah.
Do I speak Spanish? Um, not really. If I'm drunk, I can very, very, um, how do you say, string along a sentence. That's about it. But I understand so much Spanish, and it's actually crazy to me. I lived in Florida, you guys, or I'm from Florida. So I feel like everybody in Florida knows very basic Spanish. ¿Dónde está el baño? We know this. <laughs> we, we know basic Spanish. So, yeah. Um, you look stronger than Mike. Would you be him if he hurts you? <laughs> Poor Mike. He's like, stop talking about me. I don't know. I hope it never ever comes to Mike and I having to get into a fight. Mm, how long do you feel it took you to become fluent in German? Um, I'm not fluent at all, but I think I became comfortable speaking German openly three years into living here. I make mistakes and I always will make mistakes, but that was when I became really comfortable with just being like, hello, shouldn't we talk? Ich bin Haley. Be high some tea. Donde esta la biblioteca? Yeah, exactly. That's me. I'm like, donde esta McDonald's? Mickey D's? <laughs> and I'm like, that's my Spanish. Mike is small, but a scrappy little fighter. I think that, um, I don't know. Mike, he, I feel like it's German people though. German people are naturally thin in comparison to United States people. I could literally dream about a donut and I will gain five pounds. Mike will eat five donuts and lose five pounds. I don't understand how it's possible. Men in general too, like they won't care. They'll be like, oh, I'll eat this, I'll eat that. And they still lose weight. And me, I'm just like, oh, well, I'll eat my rice with gemüse. Um, and then my hips are like, <sighs> out of this world. Mm -hmm. um, wait, wait, wait. Why does Michael look annoyed in almost every video? That's just his face. That's literally just his face. Everybody asks this, and that is honestly how he looks. Um, what countries have you traveled to, and which one was my favorite? I think I've said this before. My favorite place that I've ever traveled to was Sardinia. It was really beautiful. Actually, Mallorca. The water in Mallorca was the most beautiful water I've ever seen. But also because um, when I went to Mallorca, we took a boat. It wasn't with Mike. We took a boat and we drove to like some random island that you cannot island, but cove that you could only get to with a boat. So the water, the sand, the you know, landscape of this place was not really touched by people. The water wasn't dirty and it was just so beautiful. I've never seen water like this in Florida before. And I was so shocked. It was so clear, so blue. Like when we were on the boat, you could see 50 feet down in the water, the shadow of the boat on the floor. And it was just so mind boggling to me. So yeah, Sardinia, Mallorca, which would be Spain and Italy. Um, do you drive a car with stick transmission? Never, ever, never. So we, so I can kill someone. <laughs> oh, what is your best definition of rich? Well, I think that who is rich? Mike and I aren't rich. Mike and I are poor. We're mm, mm. <laughs> we're. Or actually, Mike's going to be like, don't talk about me. <laughs> um, you certainly have the German pronunciation down. So, Andy, let me tell you, we were, Mike and I were somewhere, and we were talking to these older guys, and I, they were older, older than us. And the guy, he said something to me, and I answered to him in German, and then you know, later on in the evening, I was speaking English and he only heard like the little sentence that I said to him or whatever I answered his question with. And he was like, you're American. And I was like, yeah. He says, holy moly, you didn't hear that like at all with your German. Like you don't have that horrible accent. And I was like, thank you. I strive so much to not have this very typical American Yankee accent. And he was laughing and I'm like, no, but seriously, I said, but my gram, my grammar, my sentence structure, oh, that's very American. 
Mm-mm-mm. When am I coming to Poland? That's a good question. It probably won't be anytime soon, but I will go to Poland one day, I promise. I feel like <laughs> I always say I'm going to go somewhere and I never do. Do I want to stay in Germany forever? And could I ever imagine that? For me, I would love to stay in Germany forever and make it my second home. Well, Munich especially, because I really like Munich. I know everybody says that they don't like Munich and blah, 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 but I really love it here. The thing that I don't like, though, is that it is very expensive to, like, have something of your own here in regards to house living by yourself. Um, I would like to. I know that Mike doesn't want to live in Germany forever, so we have to see where we meet, somewhere in the middle, hopefully. As an outsider, you are comfortable speaking German when you're alone because there's nobody to laugh at you and make fun of. <laughs> Probably. Mm. Rice is an is very full of carbohydrates, but it's not horribly fattening, actually. I mean, it'd be different if I ate french fries. French fries would be worse than rice. Rice is delicious. Gemüse is enough. Ew. Y'all, I will never get over this. I am a true American when it comes to this. I like my carbohydrates. Ugh. Just gemüse. Ugh. Let me turn on this light back here. Oh, my gosh. My computer might die, though, and I'm not making any promises that it won't. Oh. How does this work? I don't, we never use this. Oh! Oh, well, is this not cute? I didn't even know we had this. Oh, oh. It's a house of wonder here. Hey. But I don't think that looks good, so we're gonna have to change it. Okay. I'm gonna get... Oh, rearranging the furniture. Mike's gonna be upset. He's gonna say, I leave you alone for a few hours and this is what you do. So, I could also close the blinds though because we have neighbors and I feel like they always have something to say about what I am doing. <laughs> like they're always staring at me at least and that I don't like. I I'm going back now to my spot. Thank you very much. Um, okay. That was the wrong movement to make. Uh, now I have to try to squeeze myself onto this little side over here. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm still here. Okay. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Yes, German neighbors can be very curious. Um, so our neighbors, we actually called the cops on them. I think it was yesterday. And for me, Mike is very German about this because I don't understand how German people don't say stuff. For me, I will say something. Mike will not. Mike will call the cops or he'll be like, I would like to, you know, do it on site. <laughs> and I'm like, no, just tell them to be quiet. Our neighbors are older people. Um, I would say 50 plus, maybe even the guy's mom, I think is like 80 ish. And they all live together in the house and they play music sometimes at like 12 midnight or one o'clock in the morning where you can hear it. Like where we live, there's basically, so here's the bottom story. Then there's like the middle story and then there's the top story. So if the people are playing music all the way at the top story, you can hear it down here at the bottom story. So like, cause the houses are like close to each other. They're connected. It's like a duplex type thing. And they're so loud. No, it's like older, <laughs> random Spanish music, Frank Sinatra. I don't know. Mm. What do you prefer, labor keys or a vice versa? 
The other day, hmm, hmm, I would say a vice first. Actually, yeah. But you know what I really like when a vice first is angebraten, angebraten, braten, yeah, angebraten, like so it's like crispy on the outside. Oh, oh. What music would you put on when hanging out with Aspen? I think she mainly likes country music. Um, I don't think that Aspen likes country music. <laughs> Mit Susan Simpf is my Lieblings Weisswurst. So what is your dream destination in Germany and in general? In Germany, I think I need to go. And I think like everything will be full circle now. If I visit the middle and north west of Germany. So I need to go just a little bit more over to that side. And when you guys are watching this, is probably the opposite side of where I actually need to go. But I need to go over to where, like, Frankfurt, Cologne. I know you guys are going to be like, that's not the West. That's mid. But that's what I'm saying. Some people get so upset when I say that. For me, it's on the West. But everyone says it's, like, not West. But for me, it's West. Hmm. <sighs> Hast du noch Kontakt mit Silas? Nee. I don't know what they all are doing. The thing is, is that all of us as YouTubers, we don't all have contact with each other. Um, we all occupy the same space. So I feel like we all know each other. And some of us try harder than others, like myself, to be in contact with as many people in my little niche community as I can possibly be. Now, sometimes I'm really bad at replying. Sometimes I'm all that at planning and whatnot. I'm really bad at that sometimes. But I try my best to, you know, just say hi to everyone that I know. And I feel like that's not the same. But Silas was really nice. But I feel like um, Germany was a phase. Germany was like a stop for him, like a little stop. It wasn't a home for him. So I wasn't going to make a crazy connection with him because he didn't have the same mindset as I did. Where does Mike want to go? Mike wants to live anywhere but Germany. So yeah. <laughs> Nord Rhine Westphalia, is that where it is? That is, if that is where like um, the Pfalz, yeah, is that where that is? That is my favorite, one of my seriously top three favorite areas in Germany. I talk with my hands and my feet. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> what is my favorite app at the moment? Spotify. Spotify because of my music. Ooh. Oh, my flute modus is angeschalten. I need to shout it out. But yeah, Spotify is my number one news app. Which one? What is my favorite type of German music? Schlager or techno? Schlager music then. Techno is not for me ever. I'm sorry if you are a huge techno fan. I am not. I can't. It gives me this doodle. It gives me a headache sometimes. Whew. What is my favorite tint on Wiesen? The most fun that I've ever had at Oktoberfest. Literally the most fun I've ever had was at Schutzen. So... And actually, the best food I've ever had was at Kiefer. And a lot of people are going to be upset that I said that. But they have, like, I don't know, the ambiance. If you've never been inside Kiefer, like, the actual inside, for me, that is such a cool feeling because it's so cozy. Everyone's so close together. It's relatively small. And I think that they have amazing food. So, yeah. Um, the get up. <laughs> 
<laughs> I played this song by Blanco Brown. I played it in the car with Mike and he was so confused. And then I started dancing and he was even more confused. Oh. Do I use my phone in English or German? It's in German. I feel like these little things that I do on my phone in regards to German, it just, it's something that I have to look at and it's very subtle. So if I have it in German, I already know that this little button right here, oh, you guys can't see it. That little, that button, <laughs> the button that you can't see, it's the settings button. And I already know it's the settings button, but instead of it being called settings, it's the Einstellungen. So it's just teaching myself German. Um, Yeah, everyone keeps telling me to go to the boat and see you guys one day. I promise. When you guys go fast on the Autobahn, are you scared or do you enjoy it? I usually sleep. So Mike, sometimes like if he's really in the mood, he'll go like around 270-ish. And if he goes 270 and I have the seat, the sits high song on, I will be asleep. I don't even care. I I used to be really afraid, like crying, and I used to get really nervous, but now I'm just I sleep and I don't care. Um Machst du noch mal ein Video mit deinem Mom, mit meiner Mama? Yes, she'll be here in four days. It's gonna be my mom, her friend, and my brother. So it's gonna be all of them in the video, not just my mom. So yeah. Have you ever been to German amusement parks? How did you like them compared to Disney World? I don't think I've ever been to German amusement parks. The one thing though, is that there is no comparison for Disney World. Not Disney World currently, because it's way too packed constantly. But when I was younger, I wanna say from the age of like, three years old till maybe even 12 years old. Disney World was such a mag magical place. Like the one in Florida, the, it's the best. <laughs> and it was seriously such an organized, on-brand amusement park that I feel like Europe, Asia, Africa, wherever you are, really there's no comparison at all. Gehst du dieses Jahr aufs... Wiesen, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think in the U.S. you'd be more successful with a YouTube channel that not you are not successful here, just comparing the culture and industry in itself? Um, I think that I wouldn't have a YouTube channel in the United States because I wanted to be like a beauty YouTuber. <laughs> Laugh at that joke. I wanted to be like. A, this person like Jeffree Star, or Jaclyn Hill, you know, these people back then, I thought Nikki Tutorials, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be the next beauty guru. And you guys, I'm not a beauty person at all, but that's what I wanted to be. And I made videos like that for a really long time. And I think I gained within like a year of doing that, maybe 15 subscribers. And then I was just like, it's not for me. This isn't for me. And then when I started doing Germany or talking about Germany, it like, it was a snowball effect. So I honestly don't think I would have a YouTube channel in the United States. And the problem is, is that in the United States, you always have to be doing something ridiculous to get views. In Germany, I can sit down, um, talk about my experiences, make it very cozy for me, not really go too much out of my way to do something that's ridiculous or clickbait or whatever it may be to get views that I would have to do in the United States. And most people in the United States that are very successful YouTubers live in cities like New York, um, Miami, Los Angeles, and all that good stuff. And I don't live anywhere or I wouldn't be able to live anywhere like that in the United States. So... Hmm. Oh my gosh. My thing always resets itself. Hmm. How many siblings do I have? Two brothers, two younger brothers. One is eight and one is 23. Flying Nest was there. You know, I watch their videos and I really like them a lot. 
the flying nest people. It's the two, the guy and the girl. I really like their videos, actually. Mm. Mm. I, FLX, thank you so much for the compliment. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Ja, das waren noch Zeiten, als du Schminktipps gemacht hast. Ja, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I think also YouTube in itself, if you're like a lifestyle vlogger, that's what I call it, a lifestyle vlogger, like you show your life, you know, and everything's perfect. It's really, really, wie sagt man, überflächlich. Überflächlich, über, um, superficial. It's not, you know, it's this fakeness, and that I don't like. For me, <laughs> ober, über, oberflächlich, überflächlich, oberflächlich. <laughs> oh, I can't say it. But yeah, um, it's very superficial. And I try, I'm really not a superficial person. I really not. I know a lot of people think I am, but. <laughs> I'm just a normal person, you guys. And I can't. I can't make my life any more interesting than it actually is. I sit at home with my boyfriend. We watch Netflix. We eat popcorn and pizza. And we go to the same restaurant all the time. We literally don't do anything exciting. Please tell me something about your faith. The Holy Jesus. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think my faith is very personal. I think that everybody's faith should be something that's very personal to them. I'm not one of those crusaders for Christ, <laughs> as everyone likes to say. I also don't believe in other people being crusaders for whatever religion they belief system they have. Um, I think that showing people the way that you live and hoping that you live in a very uh, nice way um, is enough for people to want to be like you. Uh, I try my best to be nice. I try my best to be just. I try my best to be equal. I try my best to be intelligent. I try my best to be unbiased in the world. And I hope that that, you know, wants or leads people to be like me. I don't care, honestly, what people, what religion they have. I really honestly could care less. Um, doesn't bother me. It's not something that I think about. Um, how old am I? How old do I look? Actually, I don't want you guys to answer that because some people, someone's going to say 42. <laughs> I'm 27. Um, can I ski or ice skate? No, I grew up in Florida. We don't have anything. I know how to ice skate barely. Like I can go in a circle and maybe, very maybe is the key word, do a little spin. Have you thought about setting out a P.O. box? Um, I had a P.O. box and it was an absolute fail because the P.O. box, like some of the stuff that I received never showed up. Like what people would be like, did you ever get my message or the thing that I wrote? And I'm like, never. And I think I forgot to pay the fee, the 20 euros that it was to keep the box. Like I was out of the country and then I never got the mail. And so then they just got rid of it. And then when I tried to re-sign up for the PO box, um, they wouldn't let me have the same PO box. And I had to go through the whole process. And then I had to pay like this humongous fine to get the PO box because I didn't pay the 20 euros to reinstate it. So I don't have a PO box, long story short. Um, what is my favorite Netflix show? I like the person that said I look 12. Thank you. What is the Netflix show? Um, my favorite one that I've seen recently. Mike and I actually watched Altered Carbon, and it was okay. Um, it was relatively long, drawn out, and some of the scenes and storyline, they were just pushing too much for, like, everything to match up. But it was an okay show. I was impressed. I'm not saying it was amazing, but I'm not saying it was bad. We were trying to watch Another Life. 
which is a movie or show that Netflix is pushing on us right now. And it was horrible. What are my favorite YouTubers? Actually, I can look on my YouTube channel and tell you this, who I've watched recently and who I'm subscribed to. You guys probably have no idea who they are because, um, let's see. No, I need to go to my playlist and videos that I have liked. Oh, I just watched Antoinette's video. So she posted a new video. So if you guys watch it, you can say Haley sent me there <laughs> from my live stream. She was talking about her house. But I watch a lot of people in the same community as I am. So anybody that makes Germany versus the United States videos, I like to watch to see what their opinion is. And also um, beauty. I love makeup. I love purses. I love fashion. I'm not a fashionable person, but I like hearing and watching about it. Um, let's see. I don't watch a lot of American YouTubers, even though I'm an American myself, I'm dying to move to another country. I think that my YouTube is very mixed. I don't watch that many Americans though. I watch people from other places, whether it be, most of the people I watch are from London. I mean, UK. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> London, UK, same thing. Um, Australia and a lot of German people as well. But I don't know their names. Like I just know the people's face. Like I, this is the person that I watch. What is, what am I drinking right now? This is water. It's good for you. Do you like Shane Dawson? I used to like, I liked Shane, I like Shane Dawson's documentaries that he did. They were awesome. Um, sometimes he's a little too much for me. And I don't even mean that in like, cause some people think that I mean that because he's gay and he's flamboyant and that's not the case. I just don't like his personality sometimes. He's too much of a diva for me. And I'm a diva, but he's like an uber diva. Water with or without gas? Without. I'm not gonna drink that nasty, sparkling, shoff water that you guys drink. Um, Wie lange bist du schon in Deutschland? Du sprichst sehr gut Deutsch. Mm. Fast fünf Jahre. Yin. Jahre, Jahren. Yeah, I've almost been here five years, which is crazy for me to say. I just want to say thanks for being one of the people that helped me get the courage to achieve my dream of moving to another country. And that is why I make my videos while I hit the table and break the table. Oh, Mike is going to come home and the table is going to be pushed, shoved, sheeped, and broken. Ugh. Oh my gosh, and it's so dirty. See, this is why Mike is supposed to clean. We have like a middle ground of who's supposed to clean. Mike is supposed to do this type of stuff. And this is why I don't like when Mike does anything. Can you guys see this? I don't even know. Wait, I'm gonna do it on the white. <gasps> no, you can't see it. You can't see it, but it's so dirty. Ugh. Why don't men know how to clean properly? Do I eat meat and why? Um, I eat meat. I try my best to not eat as much meat as I used to. If you knew me many years ago, I would honestly eat meat, I think, three times a day. Um, I would eat bacon in the morning, um, chicken nuggets in the afternoon, or something that involved a Subway sub that involved turkey. And then at night, I would have chili that had beef in it. And you know, that was a very consistent thing for me. And then I started not eating as much meat once in my life. I also stopped drinking Coke. And that was when I was the skinniest, but I was also working out consistently. And that was also when I felt my best. Um, but I've, I've tried, I've been trying to cut back on meat because A, for the animals and B, because I feel like there are a lot more foods in the world that taste not better than me because there's nothing for me 
This is personal preference. There's nothing for me that tastes better than like a perfect filet browned on each side with a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of pepper. For me, there's nothing that tastes like that. But there are so many foods in the world that I could eat that have amazing flavor, amazing consistency, taste good with other foods that don't involve me. So, yeah. Um... Don't Trust the Rabbit is a lovely German-English channel. I like her. The only thing I don't like about Trixie is that her videos are so inconsistent. And I am a pot calling the kettle black because I upload videos whenever I feel like it. But she literally will go like a month or three without uploading a video. And it's like, hey, you guys, I'm back. And I'm like, where's the video? Um... So you watch Nauf. I love Nauf. I love his videos. I think his videos are more artsy fartsy um, than my videos, which I could never. But he also went to, I think, film school or studied film and all that good stuff. So he knows like everything behind the nitty gritty of creating a masterpiece on YouTube. I do not. I just know how to cut, paste, pointer, select, and put it all together. Um, do I watch American Horror Story? Wait, I'm trying to like scroll down and stuff. Do I ever watch American Horror Story? Yes, I watched the first. Which one was the one with the house? Was that the first one? And then the one with the people in the covenant? Was that the one? Also, I don't remember. <sighs> what kind of food do you like to eat in Germany? <sighs> Y'all, I was going to make a video just about this topic. And I feel like nobody would watch it. It wouldn't be popular, though, because I'm the only person that feels this way. But the Asian food in Germany, when comparing it to the United States, is something so different and so amazing. So I'm not saying that the Asian food in Germany is the only Asian food. It's the best Asian food and is better than other Asian foods, well, in Asia, I should say. But I don't know what it is. The Asian food here, and this includes all different types. This even includes like Middle Eastern Asian because for a lot of people, the Middle East is not Asia, but for me, it's Asia. <laughs> um, but all these types of food, Indian food for me is also considered Asian. I've just never tasted food like this in the United States. I mean, even when I went to, where did I go? Thailand? You know, we went to little restaurants and their food was awesome and their food was amazing and it didn't taste like anything in Germany, which was very interesting that, you know, they had the same exact thing. They sold the same exact little dumpling, but it tasted so different in Thailand than it did in Germany, but it was still really good in Germany. But when you're comparing it to the United States, it's like night and day. Ugh. So yeah, my favorite is Asian food. Mm. Um. Let's see. Have I ever been to Andexa Amdung restaurant, Tony? I don't know where that is. Is that the, that sounds like something that would be at Cologne because of Dung, but it also sounds like the place that's the Andexa. Isn't that the, the monastery? Is that what it's called? Is that the place that it's called? And I don't know. No, I don't think I have been, though, if that answers the question. Um, yeah, I consider the Middle East as Asia, and I consider, you know, half of Turkey as <laughs> Asia. I also consider India Asia, but as soon as I say this to someone that is from the Middle East, from you know, a certain part of Turkey or from India, they always get upset with me and say that it is not Asia. And I'm like, yes, you are in Asia. You are technically Asian. And everyone gets so mad at me if I say that. <clears throat> in Munich behind the cathedral. Oh, Tony. So I was like way off. Um, ah, then I know what you're talking about. It's the one that's right next to that big church. 
because there's like the two it's is, it's not yeah is it found here and then there's like another little church and it's like beside that church i know what you're talking about i know what you're talking about a little part of turkey is in europe i mean it's a eurasian country turkey is i'm pretty sure yeah I know, just a chunk. But as soon as I say that, you know, the majority of Turkey is Asia, or if I say that a piece of a a Turkey is in Asia, <laughs> that sounds weird if I say a piece of Turkey is in Asia, people get so mad at me. Turkish people get so upset when I say this. And I'm like, mm. yeah. And see, and then there's people like you, Loving Beauty, that say that India is India. <laughs> and that I agree with as well, because it's very, very different. But for me, I just like to group everything, I guess, by continent and country and whatnot. So it's a lot easier for me when I'm referring to something. Um, I was watching a video, though, the other day, and it was very interesting because it was taking, it was making people guess languages. And a lot of the Middle Eastern Indian languages, so I think the guy was speaking Pakistan, or whatever people speak in Pakistan. I don't know what language they, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a technical name for what they speak in Pakistan, which maybe I should Google it. Let me see. If you know what they speak in Pakistan, I'm assuming Pakistanian, Pakistan, Pakistan language. It's probably not. Um, <laughs> please, you guys don't say it yet. I'm going to language. It's mm, official English in Urdu. Urdu. Uh, look, everyone's correcting me. Okay. Urdu. Urdu. Yeah, so he was speaking Urdu, yeah, and the guy was speaking, oh no, now I have to see what else, <laughs> the other guy was speaking, um, hold on, I have to find out what it was. And I think it was Indy, yeah, is that right? Indi and Wudu, and they were very, very similar, and they could communicate with one another. And I was just like, now, <laughs> if countries like India and Pakistan, where, yeah, I know it's a um, the original language and they're very close to each other, but then like you have people that say that they're not similar or they're not the same, and I was like, <sighs> <laughs> I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm not saying that they're the same. I'm just saying that they're very similar. So yeah. Uh, old German men go to Thailand, you know, and so Thailand is more German. <laughs> I was watching a documentary about um, guys that go to Southeast Asia mm, and Asia in general to find wives. And it was, you know, a German based group of men. And it's actually quite normal. And I just think that this is so strange. I mean, on one side, if someone voluntarily chooses, you know, an 18 year old girl, 20 year old girl, it's sad to say, but if she chooses that she wants to get out of her country because she doesn't have any opportunity and she's not gonna be able to just make anything of her life there. And she's like, you know what? There's a guy that he doesn't have an awesome life, but he has a better life than I do in Germany. And he said, he'll take me with him. So better opportunity. I think like that if that's what they want to do, it's their decision. It sucks. It's sad, I think, but it is technically their decision. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh. Bank, Pakistan and Bangladesh used to belong to India. See, and I don't know all this and I'm very um, okay with admitting that I do not know all this. I had chicken duna today, and we'll head out to have a drink at the festival. Which festival is there, Tony? <laughs> There's a festival today? I could have gone out. You know, I have makeup on and everything. But unfortunately, I live in a place where my last bus comes at 8 o'clock. <laughs> so I can't really go anywhere because Mike isn't here to take me to the tram. <laughs> um... Let's see. Have you ever met Donna from Wanted Adventure in Munich? You know, the funny thing is that I've um, bumped into her. Not on purpose, though. It was on accident. And Munich is very small. You always bump into someone. So it happens. 
Pakistan is basically the Muslim part of colonial India. Huh. Huh. Very interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I had a question because someone said that Thai girls are the real gold diggers. So I have a very interesting thing about gold diggers. Um, and I'm going to keep talking to you guys until my phone or my computer dies. So I have like 20% left, so it probably won't last that long. But I have a question in regards to gold diggers. It's very interesting for me because in a bunch of cultures outside of the United States, it is quite normal, especially in Asian and Latin cultures, for women to have, I guess, this title of gold digger, which for a lot of people means that they expect men to take care of them and they expect, you know, to be the queens. They expect to have children, stay home with the children, not work and all that good stuff. This isn't to say that it is 1000% the norm, but it is normal. I mean, most of the people that I know that are from Asia or from any type of Latin American place, they have this mindset. And for me, why is it that American women always get called gold diggers when there's so many other people in the world that are also nations, groups of individuals that have the stereotype of being gold diggers, but it's always the American women that get called gold diggers. I don't understand. Yeah, tradition. Um, it, ah, ah, a tradition. I mean, tradition can still be very, I mean, tradition is usually, when you look at it, usually oppresses one group of people. I mean, any tradition in the past, whether it be a different religion, a different ethnicity, a different um, sexuality or sexual orientation, whatever it may be. Oh gosh, Denny, hello. Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Patriarchy. I, I'm always bad with words. Patriarchy. Yeah, I get it. But would we consider patriarchy? Would we consider like this hierarchy of a man being better than a woman in places like Southeast Asia or in actually any Asian place? Would we consider the man being the breadwinner? And in Latin America, the man being the breadwinner, would we consider that different than in the United States? Is it because it's tradition in those places and in the United States, it's not a tradition based thing, which technically it could be, but the United States hasn't been around as long. So I don't know. Yeah, I can go on and on and on. I have a video about racism in Germany coming up. I have to edit it. It's a monster of a video. It was 32 minutes long or 35 minutes long. And I'm pretty sure it's going to make a lot of people upset with what I have to say. It's basically how my views of racism have changed in Germany since, you know, my first videos that I ever posted about racism. And it has to do with Nauf's video that he posted and the people that were in his comment section on that video. So, yeah. Um, you are moving to Stuttgart next week. Ooh, you're going to have so much fun. <laughs> what is, I've been watching Lauren Lake's paternity court on YouTube. I'm going to have to watch it because I feel it'll give me a, a um, entertainment. Old days, the man took care of everything in his role and women had their own. This generation is changing so much. Different groups are not all on the same page. That's very true. Um, I'm trying to think. For me, one of the bad things about this idea that the men should be successful is that there is a higher rate of suicide amongst, I think, uh, with men. And one of the main reasons for suicide in men that are middle-aged is because they have a lack of, aside from like mental illness and stuff, but they have a lack of, um, lack of achievement, lack of self, what do you call it, acknowledgement or something where they don't feel like they have been successful in their life and they haven't been able, oh, I 
I think Mike is home. <gasps> so early? No, it's probably the neighbor because the neighbor's car is very loud too. Hmm. Yeah, but usually in regards to suicide with men, they are more likely to commit suicide because of a lack of achievement. And I feel like in the United States or anywhere that has this focus on man, on the man being like the breadwinner and stuff, it puts an extra load and an extra stressor on a man. So yeah. Hmm. I have the perfect look to be a Bollywood actress. Oh, I would. <laughs> You know, I will go to Bollywood and be an actress any day because you know what? That's a whole big group of people. Bollywood is like so successful. If you are successful, if you're an actress for Bollywood in like a Bollywood setting, oh, oh my gosh, y'all, I would be rolling in the money. Yeah, I know. One point for at least. Exactly. And that's not including the people outside. <laughs> I don't have, you know, I do actually get called, I do actually get told I have almond eyes a lot. A lot of people disagree, but a lot of people do tell me that I have them. I don't think I do, but some people think like here, this little area. But I feel like if I did, like if I do this, then you can see like a big difference. If my eye was very almond shaped, it would be like this, then not, but ooh, my eyes look very different though when I do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, sorry, but what you've said about middle-aged men and suicide is not supported by any science. Um, I think that if you look at numbers, I mean, I'm not going to do a whole research on it about you on my live stream, but if you look at numbers in regards to suicide, men are more likely to commit suicide. And there have been many studies on why this might be the case. And a lot of the studies suggest that men have a lack of self achievement or whatever. They don't feel like they are as successful as they need to be. I don't know the exact word for it, but that's a lot of the, um, what are they called? Suggestions by scientists, by researchers, by whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's not like, it can't be a science backed thing. You can't base suicide on a personal decision on science. Science has nothing to do with that. It is a choice of, you know, happiness and not happiness. Um, you know, a scientific reason for committing suicide would be mental illness. That is a scientific backed based reason. But for having a lack of or feeling of not achieving something is more or less internal. It's more of psychology that's, you know, internal stuff that has nothing to do. High suicide, yeah, highest rate for teenagers is Alaska. Also in Alaska, the highest rate um, for suicide with guns, I think, is in Alaska as well. <sighs> Um, I don't know what by land selps more. I mean, I don't know what that is. So, I mean, you can't expect me when I'm talking about an English, um, when I'm talking about something in English to know what the German equivalent is. Yeah, you have to think it's depressing in Australia. There's um, nothing. Literally, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. One of my best friends lived in Austria, not Australia, <laughs> in Alaska. But um, there's literally nothing there. And then it gets dark, y'all, dark. I can only imagine. I get so depressed in Germany during winter. <sighs> um. Oh. Kate, oh, Kate Potter, there you go. <laughs> See someone, <laughs> a, a native, an Alaskan hmm, native. Yeah, it's very sad because it's actually a very beautiful, beautiful place. Unfortunately, it's in a place that is not, you know, 
ideal for living, I think. I think it's a very beautiful place to visit, to see, to explore, but I don't think living there is ideal. I also don't think that Florida is an ideal place to live. I mean, it's two very, very big extremes, but I think the happiest people probably live somewhere that's like mid-ish, like somewhere in the middle between Alaska and Florida, whatever's in the middle there, which I have no idea with the map of the United States. Is Colorado in the middle? Kentucky's in the middle. I don't think they have a high quality of life though. Um, South Dakota, North Dakota, or any of those places. Um, you often hear that Americans talk less about politics or at least different, for example, when they're at a party. If that's true, um, did your time in Germany change you? My thing with politics ugh, is that in the United States, in Germany, I feel actually very okay with speaking about politics because it's a very interesting topic and it helps you learn, it helps you grow. The problem is that German people are um, very, very, what are they? They're very open-minded and, you know, they won't agree with you, but they're not going to like argue crazy with you unless they have facts and they're going to be like, well, this is this fact, this is that fact, that is that fact, blah, blah, blah. But they're not really going to have like an aggressive argument with you about something if they disagree. Now in the United States, it's the complete opposite that if you talk about politics, unfortunately, it's such a polarized environment that if you don't like something and you say something about, you know, a political party, a political candidate candidate, anything, it turns into sometimes a very aggressive physical altercation. And that's the one thing I don't like is that we can't have discussions. And I'm also um, someone that does this. I get very aggressive when I talk about politics in the United States because a lot of ignorant people, you know, they say things that literally have no meaning or have no, make no sense. And I'm just like, you can feel my blood like boiling through my body. And I'm like, what you're saying is not true. And then I'm just like, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. And instead in Germany, I'm like, well, why do you think that way? Oh my gosh, that's why. Mm -hmm, very interesting. Well, can I tell you that they actually didn't do that in black? So yeah, <sighs> that's why I don't like politics anywhere. Have you done YouTube before? The first time today going live. I go live often. I mean, not live often, but I go live sometimes because I get bored. Which do you prefer, Oktoberfest in Munich or Stuttgart? I've never been to, what is it called, the Basen? Is this it? Oh no, it's a shadow. Is it called the Basen in Stuttgart? I've never been there before. Um, Did I discuss politics in school? What I wish in the United States actually is that they did teach more politics in school. Unfortunately, a lot of parents and a lot of people are very against politics in school, which I don't know why. Um, we have a very brief, you know, in the United States, I remember when I was younger and I had no idea. I think I was in first grade. Was that, is that correct? I think I was in first grade when, um, what was his name? George Bush and, oh, what was the other guy's name? Um, the green guy that did the documentaries about the environment and stuff. John, no, no. Al Gore, <laughs> thank you, yes, thank you, Al Gore. So yeah, um, I remember it was Al Gore against George W. Bush, I'm pretty sure in, when I was in first grade. So that would probably be in 1999, 2000, uh, ish, give or take. I want to see, yeah, let me think. 2000, yeah. And one of the things that we had to do in my school for this election was basically have a fake election. And we were divided up. We got to choose between a Democrat and a Republican. And I was how old at the time? Seven or eight, I think. No, seven, six, six to seven years old I was in first grade. And we had to choose between a Democrat and a Republican. It had nothing to do with Al Gore, had nothing to do with George Bush. It just had to do with 
are you picking Republican or are you picking um, Democrat? And then we're supposed to go home. Our parents were basically the ones that chose it. And if your parents didn't know about it, then you just chose whichever one you wanted to. And then you gave your ballot. And then we had our fake ballot, our mock election at school, and they tallied all the votes. And then that was how politics worked. That's how the election worked. And for me, I'm like, at a young age, they could have done it so much better, so much like, I don't know, in a better, a more educated manner. Uh, I didn't, I never, under <laughs> now I feel old. I was in first grade when Reagan was elected. Yeah. So that's when people tell me and they ask me questions about the past and they're like, oh, well, do you remember when, you know, Reagan or Clinton or any of these people? I'm like, I wasn't even alive during that time. But, you know, even for me, George W. Bush, I wasn't able to, um, I didn't grow up. I mean, I technically did grow up with him, but when this whole thing started happening, it was very new to me. So I was very young, very impressionable. For me, politics were always up until I think maybe I was, um, how old was I? Maybe 18. I had no idea what um, the political parties were. I had no idea what the difference was. And I still, you know, have problems understanding between Democrat and Republican because they're all crooks <laughs> but yeah um and then when i turned 18 our school we had like you know we had a register for our voters registration card and they just gave us like the pamphlet and they're like read it and then decide which one you want what party you want to choose and i was just like this little pamphlet that says like a democrat is this you know and a republican is this what is it like a donkey and an elephant and they're like and that's what you're going to be and that's the kind of information we have about politics politicians and political parties so yeah <sighs> yeah <laughs> that was a long rant oh What do I like more, Miami or Orlando? Miami. Even though Miami is very dirty, it's very crowded, I still don't like Orlando because it's only centered around Disney. It's literally just Disney. And it's too much Disney. I love Disney, but it's just too much. Do you watch use German news channel sites? And if so, do you see differences to American news channels? Oh, this is a very good point, actually. Um, oh, Bradenton, actually. Oh, that's very close to where I went to school. Um, <laughs> but let me go back to this question. Uh, so between the news channels, this is very interesting because for me, in the United States, a lot of our news channels, the big news channels like Fox, CNN, MSNBC, MSNBC, <laughs> ABC, all different types of news channels that we have, are always like a screaming match between people. And it's never like, a, I don't know, there's never nice interviews. It's always people yelling at each other. And in Germany, they don't do that. They don't have like debates, I suppose. Or if they do have debates, it's like on Stand TV, and there's like six or seven people sitting in a circle, <laughs> kumbaya, and discussing their opinions in a very um, appropriate, mature manner where everyone thinks that they're better than one another. <laughs> But that kind of stuff. But in the news, like on TV, regular news that you see on TV, I never see. It's very different than in the United States. Also, the United States, we're very fast to spread news stories that are not true. And a lot of people will say it's one side or the other, but both sides do it equally. And then it causes problems amongst people in the United States. And we have then false images of people or places in the world. I remember a story that, <laughs> oh God, I, I can't even make this up, you guys. I was watching the news and it was Fox News and the headline, like, you know, those things that scroll across the screen on the TV. And this was in 2018, I believe. And it was talking about Angela Merkel and the refugee, the economic refugee crisis. And basically saying that, the refugees that Angela Merkel, Angela Mer Merkel let in killed over 1 million Germans. Literally, you guys, this is what the headline in the news at a station 
channel like Fox was putting out to millions of people that watched this TV show or this news channel was putting out for millions of Americans to read and see. <laughs> and I just, I, I couldn't, I was just like, what? And I said, this is not true. And then there's people that'll be like, well, how do you know it's not true? Or how do you know? And I'm like, I live in Germany. Oh, well, you don't know. You're not a German. You don't know. Blah, blah. I'm like, okay. I mean, one little, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. But that's not attacking Fox because then people will be like, you're only attacking Fox. And that's not true. All news stations in the United States are crack crap. Oh. Oh. You know, for me, there's a bunch of YouTube YouTubers, actually, YouTube news stations where people give very informative, educated, research-based, scientific-based um, news. And it's the truth, and it's honest, and it's unbiased, and that I like. I find on YouTube there's a lot more unbiased news than on TV, especially in the United States. Mm. What German dessert do you like the most? Um, Käsekuchen, Bienenstich. I haven't had like a German cake though in a long time. Actually, no, I did. Mike's mom made the best apple kuchen that I've ever had in my life. And I was like, oh, and Mike ate like four pieces and I'm like, Mike, stop eating it. And I ate one and then I took it home and he's like, are you sure you want to eat it? I'm like, yes, I want to eat it later. Leave me alone. Um, Milch rice. That is so Deutsch. Ugh. Yeah. Um, I try my best to answer questions. Sometimes they turn into rants, though. That's my problem, is that I don't know how to not rant <laughs> about something. Um, do I like Canada? Yes, I like Canada. But that's not to say that Canada doesn't have their problems. Uh, Canada has many problems. That's the thing. Every country has problems, you guys. And I could go write a book about all the problems in every single country, but I try my best to see the good in every place because... That's, I mean, if you only look at the negative in life and what's wrong with stuff, then it's going to be a very sad life that you live because everybody has problems. My grandfather lived in Germany for a bit, and we ate a lot of German food growing up, or at least Americanized German food, which also isn't bad because a schnitzel made in the United States uh, can sometimes be good too. I mean, would I rather eat a schnitzel from Germany? 1,000%. But would I be happy with a German person making me a schnitzel in the United States? Of course. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm, 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 isn't there a rule for journalism? Don't they have to report unbiased and vow to it when they start being journalists? That's what I thought too, but I guess it's not like a law. <laughs> it's just like a vow and you can very much so easily break a vow. I think people try their best in news. When you watch normal news that does not involve politics, um, then it's unbiased 1000%. There's nice stories, you know, reading about the community or hearing about the community. But as soon as it comes to politics, that unbiasedness is off the table. So yeah. What do you think about Iran's news on US media? What about it? I haven't watched US news in so long, so I really don't know anything about what's happening. Um, are you talking about with the United States? Um, what did they do with Iran? I know someone's gonna tell me <laughs> what they did. Didn't they like pull out of an agreement or something? Yeah. I, I want to do a podcast, but I just don't want to do all the work for a podcast. Um, let me see what this looks like. I think that at one point, you know, when I was growing up, I actually thought Fox News was okay, and I thought it was a viable, good source for information because the stories that they put out, you know, were nice. The information that I 
uh, received was usually correct information when I did my research about it, but this was many years ago. And now I just feel like to get views, media, uh, news channels, they have to be sensational. They have to make it very, you know, right or left because people now due to technological advances and stuff moving at the rapid speed of light, people want to be entertained constantly. They want to be entertained quickly. And we have become so desensitized in the United States to a bunch of things that in order to get someone's attention, we have to be very extreme in what we do. This is like the person that um, I was talking about with YouTube. I don't think I'd be a successful YouTuber in the United States because I don't do anything crazy in the United, or I don't do anything crazy on YouTube. My life, I can't make my life interesting. So news channels, they have to say, you know, even when they include a black man, when they do stuff like that, they know that instead of saying a man, it's going to get more views. I mean, I do this on my YouTube channel. I know that if I put a German flag and I say Germans do this, it's going to get more views than um, some Germans do this. That's just how it goes. Hmm. My plans, my YouTube plans for Oktoberfest, I'm going to record my mom <laughs> and my mom and my brother and all that good stuff. Mm. I love Megan Fox. <laughs> Megan Fox is sexy, I'll agree. Mm. House music or EDM? I'm going to say house music because house is, you know, a little bit, it can be very relatively like easygoing. So yeah. What is my personal opinion on drugs, alcohol, tobacco, etc.? Um, so my computer's gonna die soon, but I'll answer this question and hope my computer doesn't die in this um, process. But for me, drugs and alcohol are a choice. And I honestly think that if someone wants to throw their life away, for drugs and whatnot, then let them, so be it. I mean, that sounds horrible because then there's so many people that are addict, addicted to drugs, but then we allow things like um, pharmaceutical companies, you know, giving, I actually don't want to say that because that's very controversial <laughs> because I don't want to say a lot of things that are very controversial that I believe, but there are so many other things that we allow that are okay, whether it be pharmaceuticals, you know, alcohol, drugs, whatever you want to call, there's so many things that we allow that are not good for us, but, um, oh my gosh, but we still, I don't know, we still do it and we still say it's okay, but as soon as it comes to alcohol and drugs, it's, it's God forbid we do any of that stuff. Um, It's, yeah, it's a very hard question because for drugs, you have to think of what is a drug. Is a drug just something like heroin, crack cocaine? Um, would marijuana be considered a drug? Or are we doing drugs altogether? Stuff like um, the drugs that they administer for chemotherapy. Are we doing drugs that little kids take for ADHD or what is it, ADD or whatever it is. I don't know. Are we including those type of drugs as well that people become addicted to or pain pills or stuff that doctors sign prescriptions for that people now aren't able to function in their daily life? And that's legal, but it's not legal for someone to smoke a crack pipe. So yeah. And also sugar is a drug as well. We never discuss like allowing kids to buy Cokes and having vending machines and Coke dispensers at schools where sugar is such a horrible thing. And I was talking with this um, to Mike as well, because everyone like you guys say, Mike is, um, someone said Mike looks scrawny in comparison to me. And I think because my mom, she wasn't like Mike's mom. Mike's mom was very, um, she ate fruits and vegetables. I, my mom ate fruits and vegetables as well, but me growing up, we had McDonald's and it was quite normal for kids to eat McDonald's. In Germany, kids my age, when they were growing up, they weren't able to eat McDonald's on a daily basis or all that good stuff. So yeah, it's just what we consider a drug is very interesting in my opinion. And what we don't consider a drug is very interesting. So yeah. There's sugar, yeah, 
but there's also a difference between like healthy sugar and non-healthy sugar because an apple sugar is so okay. But what I was also reading about, like in the United States, we allow so much shit in our food and that's not okay. GMOs and GMOs aren't actually bad. Um, not all the time. I know a lot of people are going to get mad that I say that, but it's just to me like genetically modified stuff. I'm like, what are they injecting or what are they growing? Stuff like um, the genetically modified apples. What are they, the Arctic apples that they have a less browning effect? What, what did scientists have to do to create that? That is my um, question. Mm, do I like my Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, if you eat fruits with loads of sugar, it's also unhealthy. I know this. <laughs> I know this. I'm just, I like sugar, which is so bad for me to say, but it's so true. Um, but in Germany, I think, because I actually made a video about this, I talked about high fructose corn syrup. Um, it's cheaper, I'm pretty sure. And everyone says it's the same as sugar, but it's also allowed in Germany as well now. And I think has been for the past almost two years. Yeah, I don't think GMOs are safe. Do I think some of the stuff that they are doing to it is okay and won't really impact us in the long run? I believe that. But I feel like a bunch of the stuff that they are doing to these vegetables, these extra long zucchinis and whatnot, it can't be healthy. I mean, that's what I say about the internet and my phone and Wi-Fi and all that stuff. It can't be healthy in the long run being next to an iPhone constantly with it next to your head and your brain and your ear. That can't be healthy for you. That can't be good for you. Um, sugar in the morning, sugar in the evening, sugar everywhere. Amen. Does Mike have a YouTube channel? Um, he does. I think it's on the side of my channel. If you look to the side, you will see um, his channel there. It's like MPN something. He doesn't really post any videos about himself. He posts car videos. How much do I weigh? Why do you want to know? Mm -mm. I will never say that number out loud. <laughs> never. They did a test where radiation from Wi-Fi routers slowed down or stopped plant growth. C, 